Now there's another strategy that you can use by going for pri private finance, which doesn't cost any, costs 100 quid. You need to register your company as a production company. How many of you have done that already? A few of you, good. Go to your bank and open a bank account and put some money in, take it out the next day. Now you're trading, yeah? Then go on to the company's house website and register your company for something called the Enterprise Investment Scheme. The Enterprise Investment Scheme is a scheme set up under Thatcher. If you're a UK taxpayer, let's say at basic rate tax, and I've got my Enterprise Investment Scheme qualifying company, and you put a thousand pounds in, you will get a 20% cash tax rebate off the taxes you pay. If you're pay paying pay PAYE, you'll get your tax code adjusted so you're paying roughly two quid a week less in tax. Cool, huh? So now I've got the money, you've given me a thousand, but you've got 200 back, so the cost of the money is really only 800 pounds. Everyone understand that? Right. So I've got a thousand pounds. If you leave it in and I give you a share or two, whatever the agreement is, a small share in the company, depending how much money you put in. If you leave the, 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 the investment in the company, and if it trades for three years, <clears throat> and the film makes money, you don't pay any tax on the profit. That's cool too, isn't it? But let's say the film is pants and loses every single penny. You've just lost 800 quid, right? Wrong, because now you can apply for something called la loss relief. You've lost 800 pounds, you go back to the government, the tax, you fill in your tax form, and you will get 40% tax relief off the 800 you lost. So the 40% uh, of 800 is 360 pounds. So 360 plus 200 is 560 pounds. If it loses everything, you lose 440 pounds. And then depending on, they have an inheritance tax uh, liability or a capital gains tax liability, you can actually reduce the tax down to zero. I mean, the investment, the tax could offset to zero. It depends on the um, profile of the investor. Now, that's not all. Now your film's finished. You then apply to the Department of Culture, Media and Sport for a to get your film qualified as a British film and the basic benchmark they ask for is talent, who's involved, and where is it intended to screen. It has to be intended to screen in the cinema. Ooh, that's one reason we get so many British films in Raindance because this is our catalog from last year. This qualifies your film for DCMS. Guess what? Now you, the producer, get another 20%. 36% comes back on loss relief, another 20% comes back from the tax credit of the film itself. That's a total of 76% uh, upside against 100. So you could only ever lose 24% of the money. Don't please make this mistake. I get this almost every day in London. I'll get someone dressed all in black with a cool haircut and the designer shoes saying to me, Elliot, I've got a 10 million dollar film or 10 million pound film or a 10 million euro film. I've already got 5 million towards it. I got half the budget. And I'll say, well, that's, that's pretty good. Where did you get it from? And they'll tell me. And I'll say, well, yeah, that sounds possible. And I said, well, why didn't you start shooting? Could I see the budget? I'm pretty good at budgets. I could go from 10 to 5 mil in about 15 minutes with a pencil and eraser, just going through, cut, 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 cut. I could do that. And then they say, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Elliot, you're so stupid. You don't understand. I don't have the first 5 million. I got the second 5 million. I get the first 5, then I get the second 5. And before you know it, I realize that I've got a person who is not a filmmaker. What they are is a deal maker. They're trying to make deals. And here's the golden rule of the film industry. The film industry will not make a deal with a first-time filmmaker. So I know people in London who spent one year, two years, three years. I've got a girl in London who is convinced that Harrison Ford will be in her film. This is total fantasy in her part because she happened to come down a lift with him in Cannes four years ago. And, and he said, yeah, of course I'll be in your film. He's probably thinking, get the hell out of my way, you know? <laughs> so don't fall into that trap. Be realistic, set a time limit of what the deadline is to get money and whatever money you've got when that deadline comes, that's, guess what, the budget of your film.
I think. And then view that not as a problem, but as a series of challenging opportunities, creative opportunities. Either way, you're going to get some money and put your film in production. You're going to get made the best way possible. And now you need to think of the other end. What are you going to do with it? There's something I've learned over my years at Raindance is that making the film is only about 5% of the puzzle. And I think David would agree that in the last few years, the selling of the film has become 80, 90, even 99% of the problem of the film. Getting your film made may be tough and difficult. It is physically and emotionally draining, but selling your film is far more important uh, process than the actual making of. To sell your film, you are probably going to send your film to a film festival. That is how people like David go around to festival after festival looking for undiscovered gems, hopefully ahead of their competitors, to acquire product for their distribution companies in whatever nation they happen to live in. And the first thing you need to do to approach a film festival is to create a press kit. Here are the basic elements of a press kit. Now, this is a very glamorous one I've done not for a movie, but for Raindance. And this is something we just put together last week, which goes through all the different elements of Raindance. And then we're asking at the end for people to call us. And when they call us, then I'll go and meet with them and see if we can attract sponsorship to the festival. We do this every year. And that's essentially what the press kit is. The press kit is designed to get people to go, Ha! Huh, I want to see that film. So the first thing you do for a press kit is go to uh, Ryman's and get some of those uh, cardboard folders. And when they open up, they have the pockets where you put leaflets in. Um, beware the color. The folder should either be white, beige, or gray. On the front of the uh, press kit, get printed the title of your film. Printed. Now, if you've got an extra, that will cost 20, 30, 40 quid. If you've got an extra 30, 40 quid, get the printer to emboss the title of your film and put gold leaf on it. The reason for that is that people who program and direct film festivals or acquire films are very easily impressed by glitter. <laughs> You'll know them in a crowd because they're dressed all in black, wear sunglasses day and night. Inside the folder now, you want to have two things. On one side, you want to have typing. On the other side, photographs. Let me explain this briefly. Typing first. First thing you put in is you prepare three sheets of paper called the synopses. The synopses will come in three forms, long, medium, and short. Let me quickly explain that. Long synopsis, one page, double-spaced, the first three quarters of the page, the story of your film. But don't do this. Don't say, Mary did this, and then Bob did this, and Mary did that. That's boring. What you want to try to do is sell the story. You want to try to drag people in the story, but the pitfall is you go cute. I read these all the time. I'll read things like, like at the end of the, the synopsis, I'll read, does she pull the trigger or not? You'll have to watch the movie to find out. That's cute. It doesn't work. Tell the story. And the last paragraph three, four lines, write a production note along the lines of, this is the little British film from Leeds that nearly didn't get made, but did because I am an amazing genius. And then the short synopsis is the same again, half a page long, a shorter a synopsis with one or two lines, another production note, medium synopsis, two thirds of a page long, again, another two or three line production note on the bottom. Now, why do you put three different synopses in your press kit, you might ask? And the answer is, you don't know how much space is available to the editor of the website or the magazine. Water runs downhill. You must do anything possible to make it run uphill. Anything you can do, do to make it easier, you must do. Second thing you put in the synopsis is key cast and crew biographies. Get a sheet of paper, write down everyone who helped you on the film, next to their name, write what they did, and under their name, write a simple three-line bio, which includes the following three things. Number one, previous experience, and if your actor hasn't done anything else, maybe put debut feature or previous, previously the star of Fringe Theater, whatever is appropriate. Second thing you put down is awards they may have won. And the third thing you put down is anyone famous they have worked with, anyone name drop, so if your cameraman, camera person, 
was the third assistant to the 14th assistants on the Sherlock Holmes, just down in London. I would write, has worked with Guy Ritchie, even though they probably never even met. It is a fact. It's a very, anyway. Third thing you put in is the FAQs. And the frequently asked questions are the most important element of a press kit, because this is how you start designing how you want the world to see you and your movie. And very easy to do, get a sheet of paper and put at the top the 10 most frequently asked questions of Elliot Grove during the making of title of the film and just list the 10 questions down, one to 10. And then after each question, write a three line answer, three or four line answer. Now I learned this from Tarantino. The year I started Rain Dance, he was over in London pimping Reservoir Dogs. Finally got in to see him with a mate and on the table was his press kit. And I picked it up, flipped through it. There was the three synopses. Ooh, there was the FAQs. Now at that time in Britain, Barry Norman, was he not the big TV uh, reviewer on Sky? And was not Barry Norman saying, this is the most amazing and astounding debut ever in the history of American cinema? Was he not? Do you think Tarantino took the chance to send a DVD off to Barry Norman, wait for him to watch it, and then proclaim in national television that not since Martin Scorsese had there been such a staggeringly brilliant talent as Quentin Tarantino? Do you think he took that risk? No, he did not. In every single question at the end was a paragraph along the lines of, because Quentin Tarantino is an amazing genius. He took nothing to chance, and neither did he take the chance on you, the discerning, independent film-going public in the UK, to go and see the film, and then walk out and say to your friend, my God, I don't think American cinema has ever looked this good. It's all in the press kit. Now, when I travel abroad, when I get outside of this dull, damp, dirty, dark island, I'm always getting into trouble when I say this. Cult status for movies is not earned, it is manufactured, and it's manufactured in the FAQs in your press kit. Of course it rests on the merit of the film. Of course you could write a brilliant press kit and do a shitty film. Of course that would make you look stupid. But unless you've got this, people like David, acquisitions executives, festival programs will not take your film that seriously.